Hello and welcome to another video. This is the place where we talk all things surrender to God. I am Julicia from the beautiful island of Barbados and I am bursting with excitement to jump into what we will be talking about today. But before we do that, let's have a short story time. Guys, I don't know if this is pretty much a story, but I just want to tell you what we're talking about today. It's very dear to my heart and is also something that the Lord was sharing with me to share for quite some time. Come on, I know I released my video on repentance and again, I had to be repenting about the delay on um, sharing this. Nevertheless, I am here. I mean, that is not an excuse now, okay, okay, because delayed obedience is still disobedience. And I love to be transparent because this space is about surrender to God. And what we are diving into, you can't do, you can't not do this and say that you are surrendered to God. So I'm really excited also because the focus of this channel is to not just speak about surrender from the beauty of saying, okay, surrender. There's nothing beautiful about surrender. Well, actually the outcome. Come on. I don't want to digress, but I do want to be real with you. So I'm not going to edit out that part because I really want to be real with you about the journey of surrender. And I myself, even though that this is a charge, an assignment, a mandate from God, um, sometimes it's trying, sometimes it's hard because God takes me through the process. And when I think, okay, I just want to sit in this and I don't want to share it and I just want to journal it and I want to talk about it with you, Jesus, and I want to keep it private. The Lord says to me, share, because I've also called you to deliver your message very candidly. And the people that you were called to speak to, they need to see you going through the process of it. So that is the type of assignment that I have. And today, I think that that's the story time, or if we could call it a story time. I don't know what that was, guys, but I'm supposed to be having story time at this point. Anyhow, <laughs> without further ado, let's, let's dive into what we're talking about today. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the fear of the Lord. And if you see me looking here at any point, I'm referring to my notes and over here as well. So this video is going to run a little different from when I would have released the heart of repentance. This video, the fear of the Lord, that was also given to me in a prophetic word uh, because just like the heart of repentance, I heard the Lord saying to me that the fear of the Lord must return. It must return to individual lives, our personal consecration, and it must return to the body of Christ. It must return to regions, spaces, territories. It's a very extensive prophetic word. So I decided to deliver this because I did feel that release to, to deliver this in a way where we kind of expand upon what the fear of the Lord is, which segues seg, into a beautiful question to ask you guys. When you think about the fear of the Lord, what is the first thing that comes to mind? And if the first thing that comes to your mind is anger and fury and wrath, then we definitely want to dive into this a bit deeper. Because like I said in the introduction, the fear of the Lord and surrender must go hand in hand. You can't not have the fear of the Lord in your life and say that you are leading a life that is surrendered to God. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning for me of life itself. I know scripture and Proverbs tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And what is life without leading it with wisdom? And wisdom for me is the Holy Spirit. But let's not jump ahead because I'm not taking it from that angle. I want to be a little practical and I really want us to have conversation to talk about this. The fear of the Lord because this is not something that we hear many people talking about. So let's kind of jump in. So when we take this from a Hebrew aspect, fear in Hebrew, it means yaw, ya, yara. Don't want to butcher these words at all. Bear with me. Yara. It's Y-A-H-R-A-H. Yara. And I want to tell you, in the Bible, when you see the fear of the Lord, this was also mentioned in the Old Testament over 70 times, the fear of the Lord. So when you see the fear of the Lord, I want you to think about the Lord in this aspect 
in all caps and you know um, from studying the Bible when you see all caps Lord that is referring to Yahweh and Yahweh is the personal covenanted name of God it's God so what the Bible is specifically telling us to do is to fear God and if we could put it together in QB, it would say Yara Yavi, fear God. So I know we often hear people say, fear the Lord, 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 or sis, there's no fear of the Lord in your life. You must fear the Lord. Come return to the fear of the Lord. We hear all of these things on our journey and in our walks with Christ. And I know personally that it's not always easy to know how to do these things. And if you are from Barbados and you are plugged into At The Well Women, which is a women's ministry that is here in Barbados, um, we're very transparent in this ministry. We talk about a lot of things. Um, and we have women from different walks of life, people who did not grow up in church, people who has done uh, scrupulous things <laughs> in life. And by God's mercy, they are walking through their redemptive uh, a journey. They're experiencing um, the transformative power of Christ. And they're seeing um, that God maneuvers with different people differently. And so I believe in being transparent and I also believe in not assuming that people know because not many people are taught. Um, and not many people understand how to go about knowing certain things. And so that's basically what I want to say. So let's kind of break this down today and let's talk about the fear of the Lord in its in the most elementary way possible. Um, I want that when you are finished li listening to this video, you absolutely know what the fear of the Lord is. And you also know how to pray. Um, for the fear of the Lord to be in your in your life and I also want that you leave this video knowing how to apply and to sustain things that attracts the fear of the Lord and so let's dive into that so earlier I would have said to you you know um would have given a little um brief history about the fear of the lord let's kind of talk about what the fear of the lord is and i've broken this down into three parts so that it is digestible so that it is applicable to you easy to apply and i want you also to be stirred with conviction to prayer about these three aspects of the fear of the lord so looking at instances in the Bible where the idea of the fear of the Lord was mentioned, it came down to these responses to me. I've summed it up in three. Remember, I want this to be digestible. I want you to be able to follow it easily. And I also want you to be able to acknowledge what the fear of the Lord is and know how to cultivate a lifestyle um, that is centered around the fear of the lord i also want you to be able to take these three simple points and prayer about them so we're going to psalms 37 verse 11 and this first point that really helps you to harness the fear of the lord that you know um ignites the fear of the lord in your life it would be to really be praying and asking god to give you an undivided heart undivided attention for the Lord. And so Psalms 37, um, 11, it says, teach me your ways, Lord. And Lord here again is in all caps. This is the NIV version. And remember what we said earlier, when you see that those capital letters, that is the personal covenant, the personal covenant being of God, Yahweh. And so it says, teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. When we begin to think about an undivided heart, I couldn't help but think about undivided attention, undivided de de desires, um, an undivided yearning for you. Because Bible also tells us where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. And if you could practice 
praying and asking God, God, give me an undivided heart for you. A heart that is not divided. A heart desires affections, um, emotions, um, the willpower that definitely yearns for you, that wants you. A heart that is not torn between the things of this world and you. A heart that does not put the things of this world above you. Whenever we, th we talk about the heart, you have to talk about the seat of your affections. You have to talk about what your heart is rooted in. Again, I said, scripture tells us that we're the heart, we're the, we're, we're a man heart is there his treasure is and when you are praying and you are asking God to have an undivided heart because you have the motive and the intent to have the fear of the Lord in your life you're asking God for him to be your treasure you are saying God be the treasure be the only thing that my eyes is set upon be everything the foundation of my life be the movement and the mobility of my life guys I'm so passionate about this I'm really sorry I can't help but preach when I talk about these things because you want to be women and men but I'm called to women you want to be women whose emotions whose desires whose attention is on God and so I want you to begin to pray Psalms 37 11 say God teach me help me I want to have an undivided heart for you undivided attention for you I do want to say this before I jump into point number two we do not try to balance um, God into our lives. We don't do that. We do not try to balance him around our priorities. We don't do that. God is the center of everything. And then everything else finds its orbit or its place around him. But he's the center of it all. It reminds me of that song that says, Jesus at the center of it all. That is a true song that Israel sang. Because Jesus is truly the center of it all. And if we could learn to cultivate a life, if we could learn to have desires, emotions, and affections, if we could learn to have a heart posture that says, God, you, I, I want to have an undivided heart for you because you are truly the center of it all. I'm not trying to balance my job around you. I'm not trying to balance success around you. I'm not trying to balance the desire to be married around you, my husband around you, my wife around you. I'm not trying to balance my children around you. I'm not trying to balance my time around you i understand that you stand outside of time you are above time itself there is no limit in you i'm not trying to balance anything around you i am wrong for doing that because you know you supersede it all i am very passionate <laughs> i'm very passionate about this i'm very passionate about these things because jesus is the center of it all everything else falls into place and finds its place okay we subject everything to him he is the center of it all. And when you lead your life like this, you will see that it's much healthier. Your mental state is healthier. Your emotional state is healthier. Your psychological being is healthier. Your physical being is healthier. Even your skin glows because Jesus takes precedence where he needs to be. And so really, again, pray for an undivided heart. A heart that is not split between. You were not split. You were not split. You were focused. Because Jesus is the center of it all. So the next point would be to pray for an unrivaled awe for God. A deep reverence and respect for God. Psalms 47 2 tells us for the Lord. And the Lord here is in all caps. The Most High is awe-inspiring, a great king over the whole world, the whole earth. That's what it says. The Hebrew word for awe-inspiring is fear. So basically, this verse is telling us to fear God because he is the great king over the earth. When you look at the meaning of the word awe, it tells us that awe is a reverent, is a feeling of reverential respect mixed with fear or wonder. And that's according to Google. When I mull over the word awe, I can tell you that the feeling of majestic, majesty, uh, amazement, uh, those are the feelings and the emotions that the word awe stirs up within me. And according to Jewish scholars, 
to be all inspired to be in awe of something and in this case to be in awe of god is the highest form of worship to just stand in awe of god it reminds me of that song that says i stand i stand in awe of you hallelujah because he's truly a holy god so when we begin to think about this it's clearly god is telling us I want you to be captivated by me. I want you to be awestruck by my presence. I want you to behold my beauty. I want you to uh, experience my majesty. You know, to be in awe of something is to be fascinated. And then when I tell you guys, I said to pray for an unrivaled awe for God. The reason I say pray for an unrivaled God, awe for God is because Jesus has no rival and he should not be rivaling for your time, rivaling against your job, rivaling against your children. The way that you love your husband. You should love your you should love God more than you love anything else in this world. Listen to me. Let me tell you guys something. The one thing I pray about all the time, and the women at the well ministry can tell you that I say this a lot. I am always saying to them, the strongest prayer point in my life is God, help me to love you more than I love anything else in my life. Help me to love you more than I love anything else. And I'm telling you that that was the prayer point that helped me to overcome many, many of things that I felt like I could not let go of. When I began to pray this prayer point, I said, God, give me desires for you that outweighs any other desire in this world. When I say, I said to God, God, help me to love you more than I love the love of money, the love of success, the love of wanting to be married. Father, help me, help me to love you more than I love anything else. Guys, I am telling you, I cannot speak about the fear of the Lord. And I cannot share these things because I share from a real place. I share from a real place, so who can relate to that would probably understand. But I share from a real place because this love that I have for Jesus, my God, my God, nothing must rival against that. Nothing, nothing. Let me tell you, I will shut your ba 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 real quick. <laughs> Real quick, oh my God, I'm gonna come down because we must be in awe of who God is. And if you are at a point where you feel like there is nothing about God in your life to be in awe at, come on, I want you to begin to repent because you need to pray for some gratitude. When you look around, when you look at the, the creation itself, when you do this, the breath of God living on the inside of you because that is what it is. You need to be in awe of that life itself. Come on, just begin to pray for an unrivaled awe for the things of God, where you are captivated about God, where you are mesmerized by God, where you are intoxicated with all of who God is because you stand in awe. And God to open your eyes to be in awe of who he is in the simplest way in your life. So my third and final point would be to pray for an undiluted allegiance. To God an undiluted allegiance to God you know when I was preparing to deliver this these are the prayer points that stood out to me and they stood out to me simply because these are things that I pray for I pray for an undivided heart unrivaled awe for God and undiluted allegiance to God and I am not going to tell you nothing that I don't do because these are the things that I constantly love to talk to Jesus about. There's so many times, and I, again, this is a saying that we have at the Well Women. I throw my heart on the altar. And I throw my heart on the altar as many times in a day as I have to. And that's a lot. <laughs> I throw it on the altar because... Jesus, Jesus must have my heart. And if I feel at any point that, oh my God, where did that come from? What's going on in my heart right now? Why am I feeling this way? If I feel that anytime, I like to stop and say, you know what, God, I throw my heart on the altar right now. Purify it. 
girl what is happening in my i love to have these conversations and we get to do this at the well living like they're a custom i think they're a custom but you know because these are the things this is the culture that we create at the well living but yeah let's talk about having an undiluted allegiance to god having undiluted allegiance to god so we're gonna go to deuteronomy deuteronomy 10 12 this talks about the call to love and obedience. So it says, and I'm reading from the NLT version. It says, and now Israel, what does the Lord, and Lord is in all caps here, your God require of you. He requires only that you fear the Lord. Lord is in all caps again, your God, and live in a way that pleases him and love him and serve him with all of your heart and soul. And you can make this personal and you could say, and now Jalicia, insert your name. What does the Lord require of you? The Lord requires that you fear him. And this is how, and that you, by living a way where your allegiance is undiluted. When I look at the meaning of the word undiluted, it says, and this is according to Google again, it says, not diluted not mixed with anything nothing is submerged in it not moderated or weakened in any way a sudden surge of pure undiluted happiness that's the example that they give so when i say to you to so pray to god for an undiluted allegiance I am telling you to pray for an allegiance that is not weakened. It is not diluted with any strange mixture. It is not contaminated. So your motives, your, your motives, sorry, your motives are not diluted. Let's look at the word allegiance. Allegiance means loyalty or commitment to a superior being or group. In this case, I am telling you to not have a diluted commitment, not have a weakened commitment to God, not have a weakened loyalty to God. Listen, do not start me on the word loyalty. I am big. I am big on loyalty. I am absolutely big on loyalty. When you are praying and you are asking, because I want you to pray with the understanding. When you are praying to God and you are saying, God, I want to fear you more. God, I want to have an undiluted allegiance to you. You are saying to God, God, I want to have a commitment to you that is not weak. I want to have a loyalty to you that is not weak. I want to have a reverence for you that is not weak. It is not weakened. It is not diluted. The mixture is not tainted. Your reasoning for going after God, my God, it is not contaminated. And if we come back to Deuteronomy, the Lord has already said after he tells you that he requires of you to fear him. He says to you then to go and to live in a way that pleases him. Live in a way that shows that you love him. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. Live in a way that serves him with all your heart, soul, and mind. If you think about your soul, it's your heart, your will, and your emotions. When you are praying for an undiluted allegiance, you are praying that your soul, your heart, your will, and your emotions, they are completely committed to God. You are not playing with sin. That causes you to be diluted. You are not lukewarm. You are not one for in, one for out. And trust me, I am not judging anybody. Because I know what it is like to live a, a diluted life. Where you are saying things that are contrary to the things of God. Guys, I really hope that you would take these prayer points very seriously. Because these are the things that you pray for. When you want to have the fear of the Lord in your life. So to wrap up, I would wrap up with this question. How can you actually tell? How is there evidence that there is the fear for the Lord in a person's life? 
when you could see that that individual's life is wrapped up in the things of the Lord. And you could see that that person leads their life in a way that my words are unto God. My heart, my emotions are unto God. I do not want to do anything that displeases him. I don't want to say anything that, that displeases him. I do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I do not um, ignore con the convictions of the Lord. I lead my life actually firm and by those convictions. I seek to honor the commandments of God. I am aware of the Holy Spirit. I am acknowledging the presence of the Lord. When you could see these things in an individual's life, then you would know that the fear of the Lord is with that individual. It is not just about seeing the power and the might at work in an individual's life, but truly is your soul in awe, in reverence, in allegiance. Does your soul truly respect God? Does your mind, your will, and your emotions respect God? Are you desiring the things that God desires? Do you love the things that God loves and you hate the things that God hates? Because if we go back to scripture, it says the fear of the Lord is also the beginning of wisdom. And wisdom shuns the very appearance of evil. And I believe that if we could have a holistic approach, a healthy holistic approach to the fear of the Lord. If we could speak about it from a spiritual aspect, a soul aspect, um, uh, a personal aspect. If we could speak about how to also cultivate a healthy relationship with God. And we cannot just put God as this one mainstream thing. If we could talk to people, talk them through. Talk them through. I, I really believe, I really do believe. I have so many different passing thoughts in my head right now. <laughs> That's the thing about being prophetic. I really believe that we could see more fear of the Lord in individual lives. I'm not talking about what you do when you come together corporately. If there's one thing I know about me and my assignment and my mandate. And I said, God, what an honor is it? A humbling honor. Because I'm like, me? How would you choose me to do this? <laughs> yeah, a humbling honor to know that I am involved in the cultivation of healthy relationship with God because I remember the times when I cried to God and I say, God, I need help knowing how to cultivate a healthy relationship with you. I need help knowing how to do relationship in the whole because I'm a girl that ain't really doing relationships well. So I just pray that this would have been helpful to you in some way. And that after you listen to this, you would pray for these three prayer points and you will see the evidence of the fear of the Lord in your life in a rich way. So God bless you and I love you until my next video.